Hi everybody. Well, the weather didn't cooperate on my visit out to Berkeley. So here's an example of the problem we're having with weather. Uh, this area was all filled with um, putty to um, start carrying and getting it out. The templates that we created and our problem is it's still sticky. And if you try and grind it right now, doing fairing, it just plugs up the sanding disc and it's the end of your day. So it's very difficult to be patient. We've been at this for about a year now. And these can be the darkest days, the ones you can't control. It isn't much better outside here right now. It's pretty cold and snowy. early February and we're getting a significant snowfall. Um, we're not going to be doing a lot of stuff outside today so I thought I'd take you on a tour of the factory and show you some of the projects for the Cal 40 and the progress we're making on the hardware side of the thing. particularly replacing the chain plates and some of the other parts that were difficult to find and replace. Uh, and then we're going to move the next session into showing you what's been done on all the interior trim and woodwork and some of the other items that uh, had to be replaced because they were in such bad shape. And, uh, but we're making progress and all of this will come back and save a lot of time in assembly because everything's going to be prepackaged and sent back to Berkeley Marine once the boat is rolled over. So the first item that we had to make a decision on was the stem head fitting on the Cal 40. And I have mixed feelings on this. This one was in really bad shape. And with the glass work we've done to tighten the boat up, this lip no longer is required and we're going to have to shave that lip off. It's just, um, it may be time to just let it go. Kills me because it's kind of a signature sculptural piece of the boat and something that was common on CCA boats back in the 50s and 60s. And this was a holdover of that. It's one of the few cow boats that had a stem head fitting like this. So because that's so difficult to replace or repair, we've decided actually to, to go and replace the stem head fitting with a fabrication that is smaller, has a tack fitting on it on deck, and then a small roller on it for an anchor. Um, in the Bay Area because of the tides, if we're going to race it up there, uh, it's often the case in light air that um, you have to anchor. And it'd be nice to have some provision for that that was a little more convenient than what we have here. And you have to remember this boat's 50 years old now. And this stuff is worn out. Um, there's indications of um, fatigue. The holes in the old stem head fitting are mushroomed out and worn which is an indication that they've been overloaded sometime along there and just wear is another one. There is some bleeding of the material. Uh, there is also some corrosion where the, the corner was and just below this tape. And that's really dangerous because not much shows on the surface of this part, but it could be corroding inside. So the decision was made to definitely replace all this. So that's the stem head fitting. <clears throat> this is uh, one of the old chain plates and this is actually the better of the two, but both of them had the same problems. And right here in this, we have, again, elliptical holes. We have some mushrooming on the top of the holes indicating that it's been worn and overloaded. Uh, this deck plate cover, which protected the thing when the chain plate was up like this, the deck was below it. And in this area right here was where the plywood deck core was and water had been getting in there, had rotted a little bit of the deck core, but it had also given salt water a place to just sit against the stainless and start corroding. And we took a look at this and decided these had to go. And we're still not convinced we know what the material was. It was very common for the builders, production builders at that time, to use 304 stainless steel instead of 316 stainless steel. And we've found over the years that 304 is a little stronger, it's a little more economical to use, but it doesn't have the corrosion resistance of 316. 
So we're going to replace the chain plates and our decision was to replace them with a heavier chain plate um, in 3 8 material instead of quarter inch. And then we're, we've matched that up with a lighter weight uh, backing plate. The old backing plate was this piece of bronze which uh, was way overkill. And I think it was only that thickness just because they wanted to do countersunk fasteners. So we're going to headed fasteners and we're going to have it so this matches up perfectly with our chain plate and matches the old holes of the old chain plate so that we don't have to drill any new holes in the bulkhead. And then we made it about uh, three quarters of an inch higher. So the advantage of that is with the new cover plates on there, there's enough room to unfasten the cover plates, lift it up and clean out the caulking and keep the thing dry so that you have less chance of getting um, corrosion in that chain plate in the future. Now the backstay chain plate was in pretty rough shape too. You can see all this blackness here and under that is a lot of corrosion. This actually was coming up the transom, took a turn at the transom into the fiberglass here and then was routed through the teak. Now I didn't really like the look of that and the problem was also that all the water coming down off the stay got in and the teak stayed wet. So this is a, actually a pretty corroded fitting at this point. And it's intergranular corrosion. It creates its own stress once it gets started. And it's gonna be a very weak part. So I think you know we could have seen a failure out of either the stem head or the, the, the backstay chain plate. We ended up uh, with a bit of a problem. We tried to save the old tiller and the rudder head. The problem was both the tiller straps and the rudder head themselves itself was cracked. We had to make a new tiller. And with that, we noticed that the old rudder head casting was cracked. So we looked around and we tried to find replacements and it turns out that no one's making rudder head castings anymore. So we decided to do our own. And one of the reasons we get involved in these boats and we're active in sailing and we're active in redoing boats and have a passion for this is because this is where we find our ideas. And it's really important to us to be part of the industry and be part of sailing because this allows us to build better products. So excuse the self-promotion there for a minute, but to get this boat going, we decided we'd do one of these. They are available. This is how we did it. We designed it. We put it on uh, SolidWorks. We came up with an SLA or a plastic part that was made in a 3D printer. We made some changes to that uh, on the ears and some other things to take it a little sleeker, change the radiuses of things, tried to keep it uh, in a design that would uh, not catch ropes. The final version of it was this beautiful polished stainless steel piece because we were able to take the drawings and go and have a uh, investment casting mold opened and get these parts. Then they're just, they're gorgeous. So that was a, a happy accomplishment over this last six months of uh, work. And then we built new tiller straps and we wanted something that the butt end would have a really good seat on. So we designed it for a three inch by three inch tiller butt and then made it to be reinforced with that strap. <clears throat> and in the Cal 40, the rudder post is about swept back about 15 degrees at the bottom. And then the tiller is going to be raised up about 15, 20 degrees off the deck. So it's going to sit about like that. And I think this is going to be a nice looking fitting and certainly a heck of a lot stronger and more durable than the parts that were in there. It's all designed for a three inch pipe, which is three and a half inch um, inside diameter of the rudder head. Now, all these parts are made on our water jet. It makes it really easy to make changes. It's really easy to make short runs. Um, the finish edge it gives you in operation is just beautiful. This is done with high pressure water at 50,000 PSI plus and a garnet grit. So when it blows through the part, it leaves basically a sandblast edge and has beautiful tolerances. And there's just, it's just the only way to go. It utilizes the material in the most efficient manner. And it allows us to make any changes that we need to make as we go along. It's a short run fabrication technique that we're quite good at. Now, the tillers were in bad shape. We tried to re-glue them and uh, didn't have much luck there with that. So we decided to make new ones and 
we ended up uh, with fairly thick pieces of material here and it required us to steam bend it. So we built a steam box and in our next episode we're going to show you our experience with steam bending this material. Also show you what progress we've made with all the other parts in the boat. All the other uh, loose fittings and drawers and drawers were all sent back here to the factory in New Bedford. And we've spent, you know, inclement weather re-gluing everything, re-varnishing everything. And we'll show you all that in the next episode.